Hey drummers of the world, I'm Jim from Dixon Drums, and I'm here at the distribution home of Dixon Drums and Hardware in the United States. You've been watching drummer Joe Meyer play one of the most important gigs of his life on Dixon Artisan Drums. If you don't know Joe, you don't know Dixon, or you don't know Artisan, stay tuned and I'll introduce you to all three. Hey Joe. Jim, how are you? Thanks for uh, talking drums a little bit with us. My favorite thing to talk about. Cool. <laughs> well, we've been watching your gig, which is cool, and this is the kit. This is the kit right here, the Dixon Artisan. Okay. Yes. A little different bass drum though, I think it is. you added later. This was a, the bass drum in the video is a 22 by 18. Okay. This is a 20 by 14. Cool. Yeah. Well, sweet little drum. You know, if, if I've learned anything over the years, it's that, you know, all drummers have a story and we're here to share yours. And that often includes, you know, a, a pivotal gig or some fra favorite gear. So, you know, it, it kind of unites us, you sure. know, against all the drummer jokes in the world. <laughs> but, uh, you know, drummers are, are uh, I think, a different breed. Um, I'm one myself. And um, the thing is, we like to talk drums. So let's start a little bit. Let's kind of lead up to the gig that we're watching. Sure. And talk a little bit about what inspired you to, to play drums from the beginning. Sure. And then maybe some of those, you know, moments, those light bulb moments that this is what I want to do, this is the inspiration, this is the style. Give us a little insight sure. on Joe Meyer. Yeah, so I started playing drums when I was in fifth grade in school. Signed up for the school band. Um, and uh, through there, we were one of the grade schools in the area that had a jazz band. And the director said, well, can you play drum set? And I said, sure. Lied through my teeth. I wanted to play drum set. And so we started and, you know, I think he knew that and he found a drum set for us at a garage sale. And that was my first drum set. It was a 66 Slingerland. And I had that kit and that's what I started on and started listening. I have older sisters, started listening to a lot of music. And I remember specifically hearing The Police oh, yeah. and Stuart Copeland. And that was the first time I heard a drummer on a record or a recording that I went, what is he doing? That sounds so different than everything else mm -hmm. I've heard. And that kind of opened up this whole world of checking out drummers and finding drum magazines and talking to other people who played and oh, who do you like to listen to you know and writing names down and trying to go find records with them on it so right. yeah well cool and you know along the way uh were lessons part of your they were okay. yeah i studied with some amazing teachers uh it, you know in and around st louis and kind of all over the country i would travel sometimes. I took to Chicago a few times, took a couple lessons with Paul Wertico, lived here, studied with Kevin Giannino and Tris, Chris Trelore and um, so, ma it's so many people. I, I love kind of studying with people because I love getting their vantage points. Yes. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a fascinating thing. Yeah, and it, it, it's great to have that to build on. Yes. You know, I think sometimes people think drum lessons are all about rudiments and practice pad, which, which that's part of it. It is, But yeah. you just draw on that, not only in your technique and stamina, but uh, also being able to get the gig. That's right. Because it, that's it's right. one of those things that separates you from people. In fact, talking about gigs, mm -hmm. let's kind of lead up to the footage we were talking about. How did you end up in Nashville? Okay. And on that big stage. On the stage, yeah. <laughs> you know, big gig. Sure. Uh, so a lot of people's dream. Talk, talking about getting the gig, it was from playing gigs. And it, that's another cool thing is working around St. Louis, I got to meet a lot of different players. And the bass player in that video that we saw was a guy named David Carnes, who I played with in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. and he had gone to Nashville before, years before and had landed that gig. And years had we always kept in touch years had passed and i would go down and stay at his house and we'd go play some gigs i'd drive back home to st louis and something crazy happened in that band where the drummer left and they had called a few people and he was the music director of that band the people they called couldn't do it so they said david you're the music director you got to find the guy and he said hey you were thinking about coming down here you know i we need somebody. We have the Grand Ole Opry coming up in a week, and we have NBC's Today Show in a week. Wow. Can you be here in two days? And I was like, yeah. And we went down there, and it, but it was all from knowing and working around people 
yeah. here and, and just having good rapport with people. Good, and yeah, yeah and, and you know, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. That's right. A little bit of both, especially in the music industry. Sure, of course. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be, uh, you know, great chops, the whole thing, but the whole package, meaning you have to be able to get along with people, exactly. get along with the band, get the work done, show up on time. Right. So a huge lesson. And, and keys to success. Yes. But um, so let's let's turn a little bit uh, to gear. Sure. So you know, as drummers, we all have favorite drums. We all have favorite cymbals and and this and that. Yeah. Okay. So somehow you ended up discovering Dixon. It's true. Uh, you know, not everybody knows who and what Dixon is, and this is kind of part of the reason for that video. Yeah. But but tell us how Dixon became on your radar. Of course. I will tell you, it, it, and it was by seeing three guys that I loved very much and love still, was I got to see John Blackwell play with Prince, I got to see Jerry Gaskell with King's X, and I've got to see Greg Bissonette before with a variety of different people. And I had seen this ad that these guys were all playing this company Dixon, and I was instantly like, what is this? And I believe it was a NAM show that I ran into to you and Dixon and everything, and I was like, what are these drums? I see all these people that I love right. playing them. What are these? This, <laughs> this, I'm curious. And I uh, played a Blaze kit, and I loved that. Okay. I sounded great, and I go, I wanted to check out the Artisan, and I, right. I, you know, just the Maples, and I have had this kit now for, gosh, seven years or so, six or seven years. And I've loved it. Every compliments from every sound man and studio engineer that I've go to, and I, I just love playing them. Well, good. So, yeah. Well, um, I, and you just added a couple drums, like you said. Yes. Yes. I it, it, kit came with a 10, 12, 16. I added the 20, and I added a 14 by 14 floor tom. Right. So uh, I've got two kicks and the four toms now. So did you downsize the bass drum for like local gig, particular reason? Local gigs and recording. Okay. And you know, also with working around town a lot, which I, I, I like to do, I like to keep busy, I have the Dixon Little Rumor kit that I take around to a lot of restaurant gigs and gigs like that, and it sounds absolutely fantastic Great. for doing those types of gigs around town as well too. Well, um, so, Joe plays Dixon Artisan. Dixon Artisan is our premium elite series that's mostly made to order. Mm -hmm. Yours was. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this is called See Through Red uh, Black Burst. Yes. And um, the cool thing is, is that Artisan is all about maple. So we've got a seven millimeter shell called Artisan Maple, a four millimeter shell called Ultra Maple, which was a result of Greg Bissonette coming aboard and wanting that real thin shell hmm. without a reinforcement ring. So Artisan is all about your dream drum kit and maple shells. You mentioned Blaze before. Blaze has actually become a series called Cornerstone, which lives right in the middle of the series. So you can go up to Artisan or down to anything you need to a complete outfit to start. Hmm. And then Little Rumor, is our compact option, which we call a system, because you can do the little seven by 20 bass drum with a snare and a yep. few cymbals and do a gig, or you can do the four piece shell pack. Mm -hmm. So speaking of gear, you can go to playdixon.com and see all the things we're talking about. But first, I like to dig in a little deeper. And I like to take, if you don't mind, your 10 inch drum to my workbench and we're going to play with it a little bit. We're going to take it apart. We're going to talk about what Artisan is all about. And then I'll bring it back, hopefully in one piece. In one piece? Yeah, yeah perfect. Can I take the drum? Of course. Well, yeah. Cool. Well, I'll see you in a bit. Sounds good. All right. And just like that, we're at the Dixon Workbench, my favorite place, where we can dig deep into the details. So, Dixon Artisan Maple. You can recognize it by several features, starting with our beautiful lacquer finishes. This one's called Stardust Green. Sleek A-frame lugs, solid die cast hoops, and 12.5 millimeter mounting brackets. Not to mention beautiful North American maple shells. I smell drum factory. <laughs> now, 
you may notice Joe's drum is a little different. And that's because his drum was made before 2017. How do I know that? Because Dixon went through a branding refresh at that time where we updated the logo so every drum got a new badge. Also, a year later, we updated the mounting system from a two-point suspension to a four-point suspension. Now, the four-point cradles the drum a little gentler, but we took the opportunity to be innovative and we added tracks to our suspension to where you can mount microphones, GoPros, phones, tablets with different attachments. And each drum actually comes with the microphone attachment, which ends up being isolated because the system is isolated. Now, if your artisan looks more like Joe's, no worries. The results are the same. In fact, you're in good company with Joe and also Dixon drummer Tony Pia, who's out touring with Pat Benatar with a kit from the same time that Joe's kit was made and the same kit toured the world with the Doobie Brothers. So let's take this opportunity to pull the heads off of Joe's drums and take a deeper look. Okay, so I couldn't stop at just the heads, but now that we have Joe's drum apart, let's look real quick at all the components. Die cast hoops are just that, they're die cast. They're heavier, they're taller, they're solid. I like them on premium drums because of the rim shots, and I for one believe that I can tune a drum more accurate with a die cast hoop. Uh, Dixon Artisan drums come stock with Evan's heads, Clear G2 top, clear G1 on the bottom. Now Joe has had many, many head changes, but he stuck with Evans. He upgraded though to the EC2, which is a two-ply head with a little bit of muffling. He also duplicated that on the bottom for an even tighter sound. The A-frame lugs. Once you take hardware off of a drum, you really understand what the quality is of that drum and that brand. This little lug has some weight to it. That means it's a nice, Thick, solid, steel piece, well chrome plated. This will tune drums and hold that tuning for years. Got a nylon insert in there to keep the lugs from backing out, a rubber gasket to protect the shell. Same thing for the suspension mount. Nice, solid, heavy piece for years of holding and drumming. But of course, it's all about the shell. And this is how Joe's drum started. Uh, it's about a 30-day process. Uh, it starts with plies that go into a heat compression mold. Once it compresses, the glue oozes out the top of those plies. It's so cool. It comes out, it's longer than this, and it's got dried glue around the edges. It goes through a saw, which cuts it down uh, to size and gets rid of that mess. There's a, com there's a very extensive sanding process to prepare the shell for finishing. Joe's finish is called see-through red burst. It's a very popular finish for Dixon. Um, and in fact, we just made a couple of matching drums years later for Joe that matched up perfect. And we even put the old badges on there 
uh, so that uh, it was complete. He just updated the bass drum, the logo head, to the new logo. So once the finish is cured, the drilling, the holes are drilled, the bearing edges are cut. Dixon use a, uses a double 45 so that it has uh, the least amount of contact with the head for the maximum uh, amount of resonance, which has been the perfect recipe for Dixon. Then they go to assembly. So speaking of assembly, I need to put this drum back together to hand off to Joe. I just got to remember where to start. So Joe, Here's the drum. There it is. There were only a couple of screws. I couldn't figure out where they went, but I doubt you'll miss them. That's okay. I have a few screws loose myself. <laughs> the good news, they still it still has the new drum smell on the inside. So it, look, it looks clean. It Great looks drum. nice. Well, you know, to wrap it up, and gosh, we could talk all day, is so kind of give us a feel for what, what you're doing now. What, what role does drumming play in your life? I still play a lot around town. I, I, play gigs with a few bands, I teach lessons, I do a lot of recording. So uh, yeah, I'm still playing three, four nights a week and teaching and... And you're a dad. And, I, and I'm a dad and cool. I, yeah, everything. So it's a, full, it's a full plate. Well, great. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your story. The whole purpose of this is to help uh, drummers of the world discover Dixon. Yes. And, and find that, you know, common link. You don't have to be on the world stage to play the drums. That's right. And uh, it's something new and fun and fresh, and they sound great. They sound fantastic. So good luck with everything. Thank and you. Let's talk again sometime. Definitely. All right.